Doctor Strange may not respect library rules, but in his defense, what magic user does? But surely he's learned to be more responsible with the time-space continuum, right? I mean, after Wong lectured him about the dangers of time travel, he went ahead and trapped himself in a time loop with Dormammu, so okay, maybe he still has a few things to learn. Reddit user Ark the Lad believes that Doctor Strange may have messed with the timeline more than any of us realized, and perhaps this wasn't a good-natured accident. According to this fan theory, Scott Lang wasn't totally ridiculous for believing time works in the MCU the same way it does in Back to the Future franchise. Apparently, Smart Hulk isn't so smart after all, especially since time travel isn't exactly his area of expertise. We know things got messed up during Endgame when Loki ended up with the Space Stone and hopped off to who knows where. Or maybe who knows when, since we're talking time travel here. Doctor Strange looked into over 14 million possible futures during Infinity War, because he's just that much of an overachiever. He said that he only saw one future in which Thanos was defeated, but it's possible that this particular set of events was also the most beneficial to Doctor Strange himself. According to this theory, we're no longer on the main MCU timeline, which is the one where Loki escaped with the Space Stone. Instead, we're in the optimal future for Doctor Strange to rule over this world. Although it kind of seems like he was already pretty unchallenged in his fortress stocked with magical items and the ability to time travel prior to Infinity War. If we accept or at least decide to nod along with this theory's idea regarding the timeline, the big question is why? Hmm, why would Doctor Strange want to end up on this particular timeline? Ark the Lad points out that Doctor Strange was introduced to us as a control freak, and that part of his personality probably didn't magically disappear once he became a superhero. Sure, he's had to loosen up a little bit in order to complete his training, but he hasn't had an entire personality overhaul. We saw him ditch Wong and Mordo to take on Dormammu, and he didn't bother to elaborate on what he saw in the 14 million plus futures. It's clear that Doctor Strange is a man with a plan, even if we have no idea what that plan is because he won't tell us. Even before Endgame, Doctor Strange was incredibly powerful and it's clear that he was using the position he inherited from the Ancient One. He addressed the issue of Loki returning to Earth instantly in Thor Ragnarok, yet Tony Stark still got all the credit for maintaining order in the MCU. Maybe Strange was tired of being considered less of a protector of the planet than the guy who once unleashed a psychotic robot on said planet. After all, following the events of Endgame, most of the people who could have posed a threat to Doctor Strange's rule are long gone. We've lost the Ancient One, Vision, Tony Stark, Natasha Romanoff, Peter Parker's a high school kid who has his own set of problems, and Thor's presumably irritating Peter Quill elsewhere in the universe. Captain Marvel could be an issue if she was around, but we know she very rarely visits her own planet. Smart Hulk isn't as mighty as he once was, and he injured his arm badly during Endgame. Steve's retired, and the remaining heroes aren't quite on Doctor Strange's level. There is T'Challa, but he and the Wakanda undoubtedly had their own issues dealing with the fallout of the decimation. Really, the only character who conceivably stand up to Doctor Strange at this point is Wanda Maximoff. She's one of the most powerful characters in the MCU, and it might not be coincidence that she's going to appear in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. However, since her role in the film is still unknown, it's possible that she'll be working against Doctor Strange instead of fighting by his side. If you're a fan of the comic books, then you probably know that Wanda isn't exactly known for being the most reliable hero, or the most mentally stable one. And speaking of things that happen in the comics, the current status of Doctor Strange in the MCU is a bit up in the air. We know that the Ancient One was the Sorcerer Supreme, and that Doctor Strange has taken over many of her duties. But in the comics, Sorcerer Supreme is more than just a title. You can't just inherit the position. It has to be granted to you by the Vishanti, a trio of supernatural beings. And after going through the trial of Vishanti and claiming the name of Sorcerer Supreme, you get to have massive power upgrades, including becoming functionally immortal. So needless to say, it's a major step up from being a surgeon, or even just your run-of-the-mill mystic arts practitioner. Being the Sorcerer Supreme is a pretty sweet gig, but of course there are some drawbacks, like the fact that other people want the chance to apply for the position. In the comics, Loki thinks he can do a better job than Strange, and in Ragnarok, we learn that the two of them don't exactly get along. So if this theory is correct, then maybe getting rid of Loki was part of Strange's plan. Setting your enemy to an alternate timeline is a good way to dispose of them. Plus, the fact that everyone would undoubtedly blame either Thanos, Tony Stark, or Scott Lang would be a huge bonus for Doctor Strange. He's a character who likes to be in control, and in the aftermath of Endgame, he's certainly in a more advantageous position whether he mastermind the whole thing or not. Will we get to see him become the official Sorcerer Supreme? 
And will he prefer to rule alone? Or will he be on the lookout for some help during Phase 4? In the comics, Strange is one of the characters who helps form the Illuminati, which is basically a big super-powered think tank. So naturally, it was made up of some of the brightest and most powerful characters in Marvel Comics. The original lineup was Doctor Strange, Mr. Fantastic, Iron Man, Professor X, Black Bolt, and Namor the Submariner. Unlike groups such as the Avengers or Guardians of the Galaxy, the Illuminati were much more about secrecy and subtlety. They did a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff with the intention of making the world a safer place, and sometimes they even succeeded. It would be interesting to see this sneaky group incorporated into the MCU, and considering the state of things, Doctor Strange is certainly in the best position to start putting it together. That is, if he wants to share some of his considerable power and resources. While we haven't seen characters like Professor X or Mr. Fantastic in the MCU yet, that doesn't mean Doctor Strange doesn't know about them. This theory points to the fact that in The Winter Soldier, Jasper Sitwell name drops Stephen Strange as being a threat to Hydra. But at the time, Strange was just a less than humble genius surgeon and not a cape wearing time traveler. Or was he? Maybe Project Insight and its cult connections were aware of some time traveling shenanigans on part of Doctor Strange. Or maybe they just have a deep respect for challenging careers in the healthcare field. Hey, it's possible they're not 100% evil. Healthcare workers are the real heroes, after all. Now that we've looked back at the past, let's talk about what impact this theory could have on the MCU. We all know that Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is supposed to come out during Phase 4, but it's going to be a different film than was originally intended. At first, Scott Derrickson was going to direct the movie, after having directed the first Doctor Strange. He claimed to be looking forward to incorporating elements into the story that he couldn't cram into the first film, which obviously got me excited about the possibility of seeing Nightmare on the big screen. To make this even better was the fact that he said Multiverse of Madness was going to be a horror movie, less family-friendly than fans were used to. But since then, Derrickson left the project, claiming his departure was a mutual decision between him and Marvel. Of course, just like all other breakups, people tend to be skeptical about how mutual things really were. Derrickson cited creative differences as the reason behind his collaboration being cancelled, and many folks wonder if this had something to do with horror elements he had in mind for the sequel. Sure, there are a lot of spooky comic book elements that he could have brought to the big screen, but it's also possible that he had some major changes in mind for Strange's character. Now, I'm not saying that Doctor Strange is a villain, or that he wants to take over the world and rule it with an iron fist. But we've known from the very beginning that this is a man who likes to be in control. He had to go through a major lifestyle change after his accident, and learning that magic exists. That was definitely an eye-opener for him, but becoming a practitioner of the mystic arts didn't change his personality. He's just as meticulous and serious as he's always been. I mean, he flat out said during Infinity War that he'd let Thanos harm a hair on Peter Parker's sweet head, rather than hand over the Time Stone. Not that I don't understand his logic, I'm just pointing out that he's not known for being a warm and fuzzy kind of guy. His actions are calculated, and he's not afraid to make major decisions that affect the lives of others. Or end the lives of others, considering everything that played out during Endgame. I'm just saying that he was really cool about watching Tony sacrifice himself while I was trying not to cry in the movie theater. If this theory regarding the timeline and Doctor Strange's machinations are true, then it's possible that he was just being set up to be a more dark and complex character than we've seen so far. Yes, he did know that Tony was going to sacrifice himself during Endgame ahead of time, but if he didn't set him up, then the decimation wouldn't have been undone. He may have made the right call in that situation, but the concept of doing things for the greater good can be a slippery slope. Doctor Strange definitely seems to believe that he's the most capable being around. And after Endgame, that seems doubly true. But what if Disney wasn't crazy about introducing this sort of moral conundrum into one of their superheroes? Maybe these creative differences were less about the horrors of the multiverse and more about the questionable calls Doctor Strange has made to get where he is. One of the reasons we all love Marvel movies so much is because the characters are all complex. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses, and despite the fact that they have superpowers, they deal with a lot of the strange struggles we do. That's something I don't see changing anytime soon, but maybe the idea of Doctor Strange setting his fellow heroes up so that he could control the MCU is a little bit too far. After all, Doctor Strange was an instrumental part in stopping Thanos, even if he was awfully non-existent for most of Avengers Endgame. It wouldn't be totally surprising to see Disney try to put a positive spin on things instead of making Doctor Strange out to be a time-traveling madman. However, this doesn't mean our hero doesn't have a few things up his sleeve. 
Regardless of which timeline he's actually on, he undoubtedly knows that it's crucial to keep the world from devolving into chaos and that there are less heroes to call upon for backup. It wouldn't be surprising if he used this time to start up an organization like the Illuminati or look into other ways he can expand his power, regardless of how he came into it.